Could we be seeing Isaiah Hartenstein's future with the New York Knicks play out right before our very eyes? That is the question we have to ask ourselves today. So what's up, guys? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. It's Chris here, and we're going to break this thing down because we could be seeing Isaiah Hartenstein's future with the New York Knicks play out. It could have just been revealed through a contract that was signed by Kelly Olynyk to the Toronto Raptors as an extension. So let's take a look because Bondi commented on it. So if you look below, as you may have seen a week ago, Kelly Olynyk agreed to a two-year, $26.25 million extension with the Toronto Raptors. Olynyk from Canada stays around, gives him a shooting big man around RJ quickly and Scotty. And obviously Olynyk's Canadian. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what Stefan Bondi had to say here, which is should raise the market for the value of Isaiah Hartenstein in free agency. If Olenek gets over $13 million per year, what about Hartenstein, a younger and better rebounder slash rim protector? Now, obviously, the initial response to that is, well, I mean, Olenek can shoot. He has something that Hartenstein doesn't. He's one of the best shooting centers. He's one of the best stretch fives in the NBA. Yes, but Hartenstein is better than Kelly Olenek. We all know that, and this does give a little peek into the market that we could be seeing for Isaiah Hartenstein, because no, Hartenstein is not a shooting big man, but he is a tremendous player playmaker at the five. He's an awesome rebounder, awesome rim protector, tremendous player, and a starting level center for a contending team, as we've seen since Mitchell Robinson went down with the injury, and the Knicks could be in danger of losing him as Hartenstein could just be playing his way right off the New York Knicks because he has been great as a starter. I think we can all agree that way. Hartenstein has been tremendous with the New York Knicks as a starting center. The problem is, he was also great as a backup center last year. The problem is, we can only pay him so much money, guys. So we gave Isaiah Hartenstein a two-year contract. And that means we do not have his bird rights. We do have his early bird rights, and we'll get into that in a second. But we can't just pay Isaiah Hartenstein whatever we want. We can't go over the salary cap that much to get Isaiah Hartenstein back on the New York Knicks. And also, either way, Hartenstein is not guaranteed a starting role on the Knicks like basically with any other team that's going to be willing to give him similar or more money than the New York Knicks are. Now, there's going to be teams that don't see a reason to go for him, such as maybe the, the Milwaukee Bucks or something who have a nice amount of big men or a rebuilding team maybe wouldn't be interested or teams that don't have money in the first place probably aren't going to work out too many sign and trades to land Hardenshine. But we don't know who is interested. And my guess is more teams than not are. Now, Hartenstein has shown that he does want to stay with the Knicks, but has admitted that this is a pretty good time for him to be hitting free agency, something it sounds like he'll certainly be doing, as really what Michael A. Scotto is mentioning here is that, is there a world where Isaiah Hartenstein prices himself out of New York because he's got the early bird, right? So it's like an Austin Reeves and Herb Jones this past year. It's going to go up a little bit so that he could be in that 13 to $14 million range. He played all 82 games last year. Tibbs loves him, so he's probably looking at at least the non-taxpayer mid-level money, which is at $13 million because he's reliable, he knows his role, and he's been reliable in the past there. And if you look at what Fred Katz said on Knicks Film School, the Knicks are allowed to offer Hartenstein up to 175% of his current salary, which means a $14.3 million base salary plus $1.8 million in bonuses, which is essentially just like incentives that he could hit. But if someone offers him three years, $65 million, the Knicks cannot match that. So Hartenstein can get priced right out of the New York Knicks, and obviously that's difficult. And as I said, Hartenstein's talked about this in the past. He's talked about how he understands this is the perfect time, and it's for stuff like that. When you look right there, teams are going to be able to offer Isaiah Hartenstein more money than he's ever really expected to get before his contract with the New York Knicks. It's not a two-year, $16 million deal with us. And, I mean, he has outplayed that contract. I mean, the Knicks won that year in free agency. They won 2022 NBA free agency like crazy. They got Brunson on a bargain. They got Hartenstein on a bargain. Hartenstein has been a great starting center for the New York Knicks, one of the best role players in this team. And Jalen Brunson has become a near NBA superstar and one of the best players in the NBA's Eastern Conference. So clearly, we're already seeing the Knicks are great at signing guys to contracts. 
But now we're going to have to watch them retain guys. Yeah, they retained Julius Randle. They got him on a nice deal that was not as much money as some people could have expected. But Julius understood why. He wanted the Knicks to get better. He didn't just want to get paid and play for a team that wasn't winning. He wanted to play for a championship contending New York Knicks roster. So he took a pay cut, as that's what franchise-level players do for their team. They take pay cuts to help your team build around you. Julius did that. It's part of the reason why the Knicks were able to get Jalen Brunson. So that was huge for the Knicks. They have really good contracts right now, but eventually they're going to run out, and we're starting with Hartenstein. I mean, look, when Quickly's contract was coming up, and we're like, oh, no, we're going to have to pay him. We just gave Dante DiVincenzo that money. We're throwing money left and right. We're going to be pretty near that apron, that second apron. What are we going to do? And the answer was trade Emmanuel quickly and R.J. Barrett and his contract for OG Ananobi. Someone else who's due for an extension this summer. OG will sign an extension. He's indicated everything that he would take less money to stay on the New York Knicks because this is where he's wanted to be for some time now. OG's not getting $40 million from the Knicks. It's not happening. He's not going to be the highest paid player on the Knicks. I just don't believe that to be true. I think he'll get somewhere in the range of like the high 20s, low 30s, which though a lot is going to be worth it because he does help the Knicks become a much better team. There's a reason why the Knicks are 12-2 and two with him. And we are about to talk about OG on Obi a little bit more. But also, when it comes to Isaiah Hartenstein, you have to rationalize here. We have Mitchell Robinson. Mitch has been great, but that's when he's healthy. Mitchell Robinson's not always healthy. Yeah, Hardenstein's dealt with those Achilles injuries, but last year played all 82 games, dude. was a soldier for us. Randall was the only other guy on track to do anything like that last year, and then the ankle problem happened, so he didn't. Hardenstein has been a warrior for this Knicks team. He has been one of the most important players for this Knicks team. When teams can play hack a Mitch on Mitchell Robinson, guess what? You put Hardenstein in the game. The rim protection is still there. It's not as good because Mitchell Robinson is one of the three best rim protectors in the NBA and the best offensive rebounder. But Hardenstein is not that far behind on either sides of that bill. So, except he can shoot free throws. So yeah, maybe Hardenstein's not as good at what Mitch is great at, but he also has his own talents, his own things that make him special. And when you look at each of these guys, you have to decide what are we going to do and here's the deal. Even if we trade Mitch, that doesn't free up money to sign Hartenstein. So we could still lose Isaiah Hartenstein anyway, and that would be a nightmare. We don't want that to happen, so we kind of have to play this safely. And unfortunately, playing it safely does mean the Knicks could lose Hartenstein in free agency this year. If a team sees him and says, that is our starting center of the future, let's throw him over $20 million a year or around $20 million a year. Knicks can't pay that. You lose Hardenstein, and that's the end of it. Yeah, you have Precious Achua, but he's been better as a power forward. You have Jericho Sims, but he's been, you know, he's had his moments. He's also had moments where it feels like he shouldn't play. So things are definitely interesting in that right, and I think we all kind of have reason to be worried. But hopefully it works out all right. I mean, at the end of the day, if you look here, his stats are good, but you don't really see the full impact of him through his stats. At seven points per game, eight and a half rebounds, two assists, Hartenstein's been great with the Knicks. One of the best playmaking big men in the league. Shoots 60% from the field. He's taken like four threes, so not four. Physically, mathematically impossible with that percentage, but you know what I'm, you know what I'm getting at. Shoots 72% from the line, which is very good for a center, especially one who's excelling in rebounding and rim protecting. 17.3 PER, the man's efficient, he does it all, he's he's just a great player for the Knicks, I don't want to lose Hartenstein, but unfortunately this is the world we're going to have to live in, we might lose him, or we might not, and we still keep the two-headed monster between Mitch and Hartenstein, and that would be absolutely great. Here are the other options that the Knicks do have at that center position in free agency, and it's obviously none of them are Isaiah Hartenstein, look, like if you look at some of these guys, they're probably not leaving their team, then you could go for an aging JaVale McGee or Andre Drummond or... I mean, those are the only two names that really interest me on this list outside of then what I'd rather just take from $2 million from Jericho Sims and have Precious play center again, even though he's more of a power forward. I mean, that's where we're at right now. So hopefully we can keep Hardenstein. That'd be huge. But that's not all because OG Ananobi's back, baby. Out since January 27th with, with an elbow injury that he did get surgery on. He is expected to return as soon as Tuesday versus the Philadelphia 76ers, which for those watching you the day this video came out is tomorrow. So that is tremendous news. He's expected to be updated on the injury report, which he absolutely was. 
OG will be back most likely. He's listed as questionable as of right now. But it sounds like blue skies ahead with OG on Anobi. Now, obviously, earlier today I put out a video talking about how Randall, we're, we're not too sure. Things don't look great right now. But at least getting one of them back is certainly huge. I talked about OG a lot literally a few hours ago when I filmed that other video. So if you really want to hear a deep dive on that, go look at the last video we posted. That gives more of a deep dive on how great OG is for this Knicks team. But outside of that, we need this guy back. We just do. So hopefully that happens. But really, guys, that's all I got for you. Have a great day. Make sure to like and subscribe to Nick's Digest. It means the world. As I, I mean, like this video, subscribe to the channel. You know what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying. You guys have heard this on every single YouTube channel you ever listen to if you watch to the end. And if you're still here, thanks a lot. Go Nick's. I'll catch you on the next one, boys.